seeing people in pain is not something that I do well with. I never realized that he was contemplating taking his own life. Parents sometimes have to ask that question. Are you at a point where you're going to harm yourself? It was a very, very scary time. We were facing an immediate crisis. You need to be able to give them the ability to talk. And I think we've missed that along the way. This is Harriman High School. From the outside, it may appear like any other school. But starting in June 2017, six students who had attended Harriman took their own lives in a single year. I never realized that he was contemplating taking his own life. I honestly did not understand that my child could be at risk and was going to be in any type of risk profile at all. I just thought he was being a normal teenager. Catherine Vute's son Chandler is considered to be the first in this cluster of suicides. What has been on stark display here is part of an unsettling picture nationally. The suicide rate has more than doubled for 10 to 17 year olds in the United States since 2007. In Utah, the rate has more than tripled and suicide is now the leading cause of death for that same age group. I can tell you exactly where I was sitting for every single announcement. It doesn't really matter if you knew all of the kids that passed away because it was the fact that they weren't there anymore. And it just was one of those, who, who around me is struggling right now that I'm not seeing and how am I not helping? Bright and shine. It's bright and early. This is really sad, but kids were talking about who's going to be the next person. How can we fix this problem? What can we do to help? It really didn't hit home to me as a parent until I started seeing Ryan coming home, spending, excuse me, spending time in his room and not wanting to come out. He, he cried all the time. We were worried. Was he going down that path? Was he suicidal? Back in November of last year, I kind of really went into a big state of depression. My anxiety went through the roof. I didn't feel like I had any friends. I was one of those kids that was eating lunch in their cars. School kind of became a really hard place for me to be. Homecoming, next weekend. Gentlemen, stop. I have a lot of friends, myself included, that struggle a lot with depression and anxiety. And like sometimes it's not even like, like there's something wrong, it's just that there's something wrong. And like you don't exactly know why or how or how you're supposed to fix it or feel better. A lot of times I personally go and I turn to like, just isolating myself and I don't want to be around my friends and it's in those moments where my friends realize she's struggling right now. Without knowing why so many kids have taken their own lives or tried to, parents here aren't sure how to keep their children safe. I needed it to stop, not only for all of these other people, but just for my own sanity's sake. Like, Hearing about people taking their own lives brings you right back to the day that Chandler took his. Eight months to the day after Chandler's death, one of his friends died by suicide. When we went to his friend's vigil, those kids were angry. They knew that Chandler's friend was at risk and they felt like they had expressed that. Vute and other parents were concerned that the mounting suicide toll was not being addressed and resources like counselors were scarce. We didn't know how to handle it. And this is a misconception that we shouldn't talk about it, right? If you talk about it, it will cause another suicide. And I believe that for the longest time, for those early suicides, I believe that. That's just simply not true. Some in this majority Mormon city say the church's culture has stigmatized suicide and that its strong influence in the community played a role in the silence. A spokesperson for the Mormon church said they have taken steps in recent years to talk openly about suicide and to support prevention efforts.
Students describe Harriman High School as a busy, sometimes overwhelming place. It is jam-packed and so it's always kind of like, do I say hi to the, all of these people or do I just kind of like keep my head down and put some earbuds in and just kind of like ignore all of the looks and stuff. Depending upon your personality, it can either be like a really great thing or it can be like the most terrifying thing in the world. In some ways, rapid growth defines Harriman, a place that used to be mostly farmland. In the year 2000, there were only 3,300 residents in total. Today, nearly that many students attend Harriman High, which was built to hold a maximum of 2,800. For lunch today, we have some delicious sweet and sour chicken. You're going to want to hustle, people. This is the lunch you don't want to miss. Lunch tables. How are the lunch tables looking? Kind of sad. This fall, Ryan Cherry and his friends launched a chapter of an outreach group called the Golden Gate Club. When I sit there, I go, hey guys, want to come sit with us? And they're like, oh. Whenever I've been there, it's actually been pretty good. So. Keep in mind that oh, this yeah. is going to build. I mean, yeah. we are brand new bringing this We up. have students that go and they sweep the halls during lunch to find those kids that are sitting alone in the bathroom or in their cars and stuff like that. And just pull your friends over and then that's what we are. We're that group that reaches out to everybody, whether they're the kind of kid that would normally be part of your social circle or not. Okay. So My son couldn't communicate. If he would have had a program, maybe, just maybe, that would have given him a, a fighting chance that someone would have told me, look, your son is thinking about making a fatal mistake. Possibly. I'd like to think that maybe these resources now that we're putting in place could give someone a chance. I do. Vute is working with local officials to spread awareness about suicide prevention. And I wasn't sure whether we wanted to go over QPR first. Think of it like CPR, but for suicide prevention. Question, persuade, refer. I'm trying to pay for everyone to get the training so that every school can have a QPR trainer on hand. I think this is absolutely the right direction. At least within the last six months, everything has been data-driven. Number of suicides, who is at risk? And now we're talking about people who if they find someone or someone in their family might be at risk, it's the ability to ask those questions. You need to be able to give them the ability to talk. And I think we've missed that along the way. We gave them the ability to talk via text, on social media, and they don't understand how to really talk about what's going on within their lives. Cause I hope you're happy. It's a difficult subject to talk about. Sometimes you kind of need someone to like reach out to you and like ask you the right questions. To help prevent what happened last year is one of my personal goals. But if something does happen that we'll be able to rally People care. People want to make a difference. And well, I think the problem is that people just don't know how. And it's just putting yourself out there that's going to make those changes and that difference. <laughs>